What's going on everybody? My name is Michael Anthony. Today we are gonna be looking at this beast right here, the Canon RF 28 to 70 millimeters F2, AKA the barrel. This monstrosity of a lens is one of the most unique lenses ever developed by any manufacturer. Now, if you've been following my work for a little while, you know that for the last 18 months or so, I've been shooting with the Canon EOS R and absolutely loving it. I truly believe uh, the RF system is one of the best systems out there, not only for YouTube because of the amazing autofocus and the, and the awesome color, but also for shooting weddings because I love the focus, I love the lens selections, there's just a lot of great reasons. Now, I know you're gonna say, hey Mike, how can you shoot uh, a wedding with only one card slot? And it's just not a big deal to me guys and uh, soon I'll be upgrading to the R5 which is said to have two card slots. But today we are here to talk about this lens, the 28 to 70, which features a maximum aperture of F2 and a minimum aperture of F22. It's compatible with the RF mount and Canon's uh, larger RF mount allows distribution of the weight on these lenses toward the center and toward the back rather than toward the front like we would have seen in an EF mount lens like the 200 millimeter F2 with that big old front barrel, right? Now, more importantly, the weight, more importantly than the weight distribution, the RF mount allows Canon to get some of the optics in the lens closer to the sensor, meaning that the light does not have to bend as much before hitting that sensor, leaving you with better image quality. This leaves RF lenses which, with uh, sharper images even at wide open apertures from corner to corner. Now, this lens features 19 different elements and 13 different groups, and that means that this lens is going to be heavy, 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 over three pounds, right? I know. It's not that heavy, but it's heavy for a lens, okay? And that being said, this lens, uh, it features a focal length somewhere between 24 to 70, right? And, uh, and that focal length, that 24 to 70 lens has been in every wedding photographer's bag since the beginning of wedding photography. However, if you're like me, you probably like to carry a 24 to 70 for convenience along with another group of prime lenses in order to have that beautiful shallow depth of field that can really pop your subjects off of a background or even add a little bit of that thrill aesthetic to your images, right? Now, the best thing about this 28 to 70 is that it does literally take the place of four different lenses. It can replace a 24 to 70, the 35 millimeter, the 50 millimeter, a 85 millimeter. So when you combine the weight of all of these prime lenses versus the weight of this hunker right here, you're probably going to be coming out ahead, at least in the bag. Your hands, it'll be a little bit heavier. But all that being said, let's talk about my experience with this lens in the real world. This lens is heavy for lenses, right? And I recommend using a battery grip with it, which is gonna help uh, improve the ergonomics of the camera and add a little bit of weight toward the back of that camera, right? And uh, that being said, again, carrying a lens that is two pounds versus one that is three pounds, it's not gonna send me to the doctor for a bad back, okay? So the weight for me is not really that big of an issue. It is heavier, but it's not that big of a deal, okay? And I'm gonna tell you something though. With this big ass front element, this, this huge piece of glass right here, you best keep this hood on at all times because if there's any sort of metal rustling around in your camera bag, it's gonna carve its initials right here into the front piece of glass. So make sure you keep a filter on or put this, um, put this lens hood on at all times, okay? Now, I found the color reproduction on this lens to be absolutely outstanding. It produces a true range of colors at all apertures and even shooting wide open, the out of focus areas show little to no chromatic aberrations. So when we're shooting at F2, you still have great sharpness even in the corners of the images. It's, it's unlike any other lens that I've ever used in that regard. Vignetting is minimal uh, even when shooting wide open, which is a, a great thing. Uh, we can add vignetting in post-production, but it's not gonna mess with the quality of the image. So when you compare this lens to something like a Canon EF 50mm 1.2, this lens feels like a Tesla, and the old EF lenses feel like, like a 98 Honda compared to it. And no offense if you're driving a 98 Honda, I'm just saying this is like next level, right? And what I mean by that is the build quality, the finish, the capabilities are all amazing, but most importantly, I know that when I'm shooting at F2 at any focal length, this lens, when you couple it with the eye autofocus in the EOS R, it's gonna be able to keep pace with a moving subject and get 90% of my shots in focus. It's an amazing time to be a photographer. I mean, this technology is incredible right now. Now, that being said, there are a couple of drawbacks that I absolutely have to mention or we're not doing a real review, right? Number one is obviously gonna be the size. This lens is massive. And what I mean by the physical footprint, not necessarily the weight, although it is heavy too, but when you add on the lens hood and this gets even larger, it's gonna take some space up in that camera bag. So make some more space and you should be able to do that by uh, clearing out some of those prime lenses in your bag. Number two is gonna be the lack of image stabilization. Now, I am not complaining that this lens doesn't have IS, okay? You can only ask for so much in a product like this. Uh, and adding IS, Canon would have made this much heavier, which is why they opted to add it to the 24 to 70 f2.8 version rather than this one. But 
Not having image stabilization in my current body right here can make getting some cool shots like slow shutter speeds much harder when you're not using a tripod. Um, the EOS R5 is supposed to have built into the camera, so I'm looking forward to that. Number three, the biggest downside, and I'm sure you're aware of this, is the price, okay? You've probably figured out by now that the RF lenses are not cheap by any means, but this one is the most expensive one right now. It comes in at about $2,995. That's a lot of coin for a lens, but when you consider that it can take up the space of four lenses into one, that becomes a whole lot easier to stomach, okay? Now, overall, you know, as a wedding photographer, I think this is an amazing uh, piece of glass. I think this is a great product to put in your camera bag. Who's it not for? If you're a photographer who does video as well, you may want to get that 24 to 70 as opposed to the 28 to 70 because of that image stabilization built in. And even if the Canon EOS R5 does end up having in-body stabilization, which they're saying it, it probably does, um, you're still going to want that, you want to take advantage of that dual image stabilization between both of them. So if you're doing any sort of hybrid photography video, I don't think that the, uh, the 28 to 70 is the better choice between this and a 24 to 70, okay? But all that being said, guys, you know, uh, I think that this is a really unique product that can, can actually make our lives easier. On an engagement session, you only have to use one lens as opposed to having to use three or four of them. And I looked into my shooting statistics on a wedding day, and over the last 10 weddings, 74% of all the images I've taken, thousands of photos, were taken with this lens. So I, if, you're, if you're a pro and you don't mind the weight, you can make the investment by this lens. It's an awesome lens. You are not going to regret it. I promise you that. But uh, ultimately, I wanna know what you guys think, okay? Do you think that this is a good investment? Do you think it's a big waste of money? Let me know down in the comments below. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.